So let's go ahead and let's talk about UConn because that is a team on our list. The UConn Huskies, they have, to me, I mean, one of the craziest big guys in all of college basketball, the Dama Sandango. Uh, and I mean, this guy is unreal. One of the best big guys last year. You can only, you can only imagine what he's going to put up this season. You know, when you look at UConn last season, they went 13 and six in the conference, 23 and 10 uh, overall. That's about where I see them this year. I see them about exactly right there. Uh, I can see them as the third or fourth team in the Big East. I can, I mean, they could battle for the Big East lead. Don't get me wrong, but I, to me, the ceiling is is runner up. What about you? Oh no, I agree. And a lot of people will look at Connecticut and say, "Oh my God, they lost four guys through the transfer portal. Four pretty important guys on there." But when you look at who their coach is and Dan Hurley, he's a no nonsense. Look, you know, I don't care how talented you are. You're going to play our system. If you're not going to play our system, then you need to go. And I think from that standpoint, Hurley knows that he needs to get guys to play, you know, I don't want, I don't want to call it a four corners offense, but in essence, it kind of is. And then do everything they can to get the ball into Sonago, but still be able to keep teams honest by being able to hit the threes. And I think the players that were, that transferred out had maybe a higher opinion of what their value was to a college basketball team than what Dan Hurley saw and what Dan Hurley knew he needed to have in place to, to capitalize on the, on this, the immense talent that Sonago has. And, and you, you touched on it. He's the sky is the limit. I don't think we really know what he's going to do. I, I, we really don't know how high that ceiling is. We know what the floor is, and that floor is better than half the, the front court people in the Big East for sure, and probably more than half in the country. So uh, UConn is going to go as far as Sonago can get them. They're going to have to f- be more consistent on the perimeter to make real noise in the big east but i mean they're they're, they're definitely uh, i think you doing that that five cut off the big east i think that's fair there could be some surprises but i think there's a lot of teams that need to restock and under new coaches they will do that over the next year or two but for right now uconn is in that upper echelon of the big east and will they make it to the 16 i can see them making it to the 16 yeah I could definitely see UConn making it that far. I wouldn't rule it out whatsoever. They have a pretty easy November to start off until they get to the Phil Knight Invitational where they take on Oregon. If they win that, they could see Villanova early. So that's something to keep in mind. Didn't really think of that when we were talking about Villanova. What I'm interested about UConn other than um, Sinago is their guards. Both of them come in transfers, one from East Carolina, one from Virginia Tech. How will Hurley deal with those guards? I'm I'm interested in that one. I think that is something that is not going to be an easy task, you know, to get them all on the same page right away. Hopefully they had a good offseason, a good preseason, and, and get them stepping. Now, it's not like they came from FCS schools. Newton came from East Carolina, and Allen came from Virginia Tech. So it's not like they're going to be missing any of the competition. They know what they're getting themselves into. So that's probably the biggest question mark that I will have initially when we're looking at them playing Stonehill and Boston U and UB, you know, to start off their season pretty easy. I want to see their their guard play mesh. And but I, I think, again, those Hurley, those are the kind of players he wants to bring in to this program. And um, I vaguely. Remember the kid from Virginia Tech. I, I can't say that I could break down a specific game or part of his game, but he seemed to. I know he made contributions to their uh, to their ACC tournament uh, success. So, I, and I think his shot. I, th- I think of all of the guys that that are going to be there, he might be the best pure shooter that UConn can count on that they have on, on their roster as far, I mean, as far as an outside threat. I'm not talking about the beast of the East, you know, inside. I'm talking about an outside shot. So 
you know, Dan Hurley is, he's a different generation. You know, he's not as crazy as he's kind of crazy, <laughs> you know, and his players are going to play his way. And I think for a team like UConn, who still hasn't gotten to the upper echelon of basketball teams again, that means that it's been a program build. They've had some flash of successes and then slid down. I think Hurley's going to get them to the point where every year you know exactly what they're going to be. So uh, UConn is, is going to be interesting. UConn's going to be one of those teams that that they might say, well, maybe they're on the bubble. Yeah, but they're probably going to get in. And even if they're in one of those stupid playoff play-in games where you shouldn't have higher seeds be in a play-in game, but that's another show, uh, they, they can cause some problems in any bracket. 